welcome to the Rex Andrew Show. Glad to have you with us today. If you are a first time listener, thank you. Glad you found us. Welcome to the conversation. And don't forget to comment. We love the interaction. And then one last thing, um, I'm not bashful. I will beg. And in fact, I have a caller on today. So I'm a well-dressed beggar. And we'll ask you to give us the five stars. If you like what we're doing, uh, just uh, give us the stars. It helps us in the position in the application uh, stores. Uh, want to thank those who have been listening and are listening today. Thanks to you and our great listener and our great guests. Thanks to you. We have cracked the top 10% of the fastest growing podcasts in the planet. Now that's a great accomplishment for you folks because there's over 850,000 active um, podcasts in the marketplace. We have currently listeners in 32 countries, six continents and over 450 cities. And if I could figure out a way to market the penguins and then help them recharge their cell phones, I'm pretty sure I would have listeners on that last continent. So thank you very much for joining. Um, one key thing, you know, you can always find us on all the social media platforms. I don't need to list them. They're, we're out there everywhere. But I want you to stop by the show website at rexandrewshow.com. The reason why I ask you to do that is today, like every interview we do, we interview these amazing guests, but we don't get to tell everything about their story. So you go out there, there's a profile for those guests. There is uh, information, links to their businesses, their profiles, those types of things. So you can get the rest of the story uh, out on the website. So thank you very much. And one last thing is, if you don't like your current podcast platform, if you're listening on that format, heck, it doesn't matter. There's 23 out there that have us. So find a home and listen to us as we go along. Okay. Enough of that uh, homework stuff, get that out of the way. We want to talk to our guest here today. You know, the show's all about um, successful people doing great things, and we tell the people side of the story. And, you know, my biggest problem is two. One, I have too many interests for just one lifetime. And then two, the real big problem is around the corner is another discovery. And so today is another discovery in the individual that I have on. So, Excited to have her with us. Okay, so just a couple things to, about her before we uh, get fully introduced. Um, she's a podcaster, and I love this podcast that she's come up with. It's called The Corporate Quitter. Oh my goodness, I know so many people who are corporate quitters. And if you could see me on YouTube right now, if you're watching there, my hand is raised. I understand that whole process. Um, she's an avid reader. Now, this is a funny one. Um, She's a closet video games person. So, you know, not a whole lot of women were going to admit to that. Okay. But most importantly, in addition to her podcast today, uh, she's the founder of the uh, Adulting Manual. And this was the thing that made me decide I wanted to talk to her and book her to come on the show today because what the heck is the Adulting Manual? So, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Gabby Ionello. Gabby, how are you today? Hi, Rex. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your show. Fantastic. Now, I understand you're uh, dialing in from the New York area. I am. Yes. Yeah. So I actually am on Long Island. Um, I was in New York for like the city for a really long time. But recently I moved back to Long Island and I'm out um, on the East Coast. So near Riverhead or the Hamptons, like all the way out there in the boonies. Fantastic. Well, you know, it's really funny for those that live. I used to live on the East Coast and now I live in Colorado. And, you know, here in Colorado, if you went diagonally across the state, which you can do uh, on highways, it takes about uh, 12 hours. So if you drove 12 hours from where you are, you'd be across many, many states. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You talk about being out in the boonies and I grin. So that's funny. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, the show is all about people's stories. You know, success does not fall out of the sky on people. Okay. We are who we are today based on our experiences, our talents, and the, the influences that shape us. So in order to really understand where you are today with your podcast and your manual and all those good things, we wanna dive back into your history, okay? So this is a long list, but I'll remind you, you know, so don't worry, you have to remember. We wanna know where you were born, okay? And then where were you raised? Because sometimes that's not always the same. I had a guest on the show who actually moved, uh, saw, um, Ellie Sanja, who moved 63 times before she was 15. 
Wow. Okay. Oh my so God. Where you were raised is different than where you were born. Uh, we want to know about your parents, what they did. Now, parent influence is really interesting. It can be very supportive. Like, you know, mom and dad said, well, I'll go do these things. Or maybe mom and dad were an example of, I don't want to do anything like that. Okay. So those types of things. We want to know what you were doing as a kid growing up, interest, how do you spend your free time? I don't care if it's computers or dance, theater, sports, uh, shoplifting, and don't laugh. Uh, I have a guest by age 15 who was a car thief. And so um, people do different things. Then we want to learn a little bit about your education and then we'll hopscotch around about some pivot points and experiences that got you where you are today. So if you could, uh, Gabby, where were you born? Actually, boring story. I was born and raised on Long Island and I'm still in New York. So um, I haven't traveled that much. I mean, I've gone on vacation, but I haven't actually left and lived somewhere else. But I am actually, this is the first time I'm considering leaving New York and considering moving to Florida, which I'm hoping to do in fall of this year. Oh, things are open in Florida. Here we are yeah. in May talking about this. And there's still lots of lockdowns and particular areas of the country. Uh, I've lived in Florida. It's a great state. Uh, I can tell you more of that about that off of air about my pros and cons of that. But um, now do you have siblings? I do. So I have two brothers. I'm the oldest. Okay. So I have a brother who's 11 months younger than me. And then I have a brother who's actually 10 months, 10 years younger than me. So it's a huge, it's huge gap. So I have a brother who's basically like my twin. And then one who I kind of helped raise because I was 10 at the time when he was born. So as a teenager, you know, I'd kind of be like the, the, the babysitter who lived at home while my parents went and worked. Okay. So you were, you have a, almost an Irish twins and then a babysitting opportunity. Basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fantastic. What did your parents do growing up? So um, my, my parents are actually pretty unique. So my dad, he went to chiropractic college, so he became a holistic doctor. So he owns a practice that he does chiropractic work in. He does nutritional work. Um, he works a lot with women's hormones. So if women are trying to get pregnant or, um, you know, have a, an easy delivery, he'll help with kind of providing the nutrition and the way to actually have that happen, which is really awesome. Fantastic. And then on the flip side of that, my mom, um, she was a stay at home mom for a while. And she did like aerobic classes and spin classes. But then a couple of years ago, maybe at, at least like, maybe eight years ago now, five, six, seven, eight years ago, she started to actually branch into my dad's business. So now she runs a weight loss section of the business because a couple of years ago too, kind of what started it all, she actually started figure compet like competing as a figure person. Okay. And so she, uh, yeah, with the whole, the bathing suit and the jewelry and like the glitz and the glam, yeah. she won her pro card and was basically helping people, um, unintentionally or even unpaid, you know, how to maintain their physique, how to get in shape, what to eat, what not to eat. And so that part of her business, you know, she basically started a business because of that. So I was really well, fortunate because I might I have found, to see, you know, I might have found two more um, podcast guests I'd be interested in talking to. <laughs> I'm sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. You got no, speak. no, it's okay. They, I, my dad loves, loves to speak. So he would a hundred percent jump on that, but they, uh -huh. um, I was really, really fortunate to be able to be in a household where my parents are both that they're business owners. Right. Cause it gives yeah. me the kind of the insight of what it would be like for myself as well. Okay. Fantastic. So what did you do with your spare time growing up out there in uh, New York? So I, I drew a lot. I was really into art as a kid. So I did everything from pottery making to painting to drawing. I did a lot of, we get like tracing paper and like draw the Pokemon and then like, then transfer it to regular paper. And my walls were like covered with Pokemon pages. And um, I also was really into sports. So I did you name it, I did it, soccer, baseball, softball, field hockey, gymnastics, like anything that I can do to like play outside, I would do. Okay. And the reason that even started is I was lucky enough to grow up in a cul-de-sac. So it was a bunch of houses and all of the houses luckily had kids around my age, but they were all like mostly boys. So I was always like, had to like keep up with the boys, right? Like I'm only four foot 11. So not only am I like the short little like thing with these high pigtails trying to like keep up with all the men, but it's like, they, you know, they weren't easy on me in any way. And that right. was great because it made me be like really tough. And like, I had to learn like how to run faster, play harder. Like if I fell down and scraped my knee, like got back up again, like didn't cry. Like, I mean, I still had my moments of crying, but at least, you know, it, it definitely, they made me give a run for my money for sure. Well, that's great. 
Now, sports are a huge influence. Huge influence. Okay. Yeah. So after yeah. you got out of high school, what did you do next? What was your next time? I um I actually went to college right away, but I was really conflicted. So I went to a liberal arts school. It was just a community college to get my basic degree. Okay. Um, I was in a crossroads because part of me wanted to go into like um, criminology or forensics because I really loved puzzles and figuring things out, but then I couldn't stomach the like the blood and the the story behind why those people had died or why a homicide had happened or something like that. So I didn't go that route. And then I was like, oh, I love archaeology. Again, another similar thing where you're figuring out a puzzle. But I felt that it was going to conflict with my being close to my family. And I also want to like have my own family and own a home and and do all that, which I couldn't wouldn't be able to do if I was traveling. So then I figured, why don't I do teaching? I'm good with kids. I raised my brother practically. So I went to the community college, got my degree, then transferred to another school and finalized my bachelor's degree in general ed and special ed. So I actually, got, I got a dual degree. Okay. So you come out of school with a teaching certificate, right? Then? Yes. Yep. Fantastic. I always have a joke and I say that uh, liberal arts uh, degrees mean uh, literally broke. And so um, <laughs> it's uh, I appreciate that. You know, I understand people wanting to do that, but with the amount of information that's available to us today on YouTube and whatever, you can, you can study all those really cool and interesting things. Uh, But I I have nieces and nephews who have degrees that they'll never use because there's no application for them to get a real job. Now um, getting their teaching certificates. Awesome. Cause there's, there's always, you know, a need for great teachers and stuff. So yeah. Now, now, you know, you're very, you shouldn't be tough on yourself because being conflicted at that age is, you know, not a, not an uncommon thing. In fact, it's probably a healthy thing. I've got five kids, 18 through 26. And, you know, it's a lot of times it isn't until they get a few years into college or even out of college before they figure out this is what I really want to do. You know, so yeah. you walk into a school starry eyed and and idealistic and you walk out a lot of times very different than that. So yeah, that's cool. So did you go to work as a teacher? Did you get a job in the commercial sector? What was the next step? I actually job hopped aggressively for years. So when I graduated about two months before I finalized my degree, I had done a whole year's worth of student teaching, like multiple grades, like all of that. And then once I was in the process of graduating and trying to line up like a job um, after the summer, I realized I was kind of sold on a pipe dream. Like the big thing about being a teacher is like, oh, you get a great pension. But then what about now? Like the salary was terrible. The, the, the politics of about it were terrible. You had to deal with the union, which in some ways is great. Some ways it's not yeah. like, yeah, you get summers off and you get holidays and all of that. But like, I have to live with my parents for eight years until I get a decent, maybe salary. Like there's no way you're hitting like a salary that you can afford an apartment on your own. So for me, I was like, that's not going to work for me. So I ended up, um, I worked for a high-end summer camp in the Hamptons, which I found off Craigslist, which is really cool. So I worked there for um, just the summer. But the great thing about that was not only did I get to use my educational background to do this, but the person, the, the CEO and founder of that company actually was the person who helped me segue to get into Manhattan because it's something that I always wanted to explore was city life coming from the suburbs. And so I was able to work for him as like a kind of a part-time assistant while I worked as a nanny in the city, right? Because I used my teaching degree to kind of work as a nanny. You know, the family was thrilled because not only was I a good caretaker, but I had an educational background. So their kids, they knew we're going to get, you know, the, the top, you know, the creme de la creme, if you will, with me being with them. So, uh, so, so basically I juggled working as an assistant for him and a nanny to three kids for a family, parents who were really, really well deep into a corporate life, you know, job. One worked in banking and she was like really high up there, like crazy sure. hours, like getting paid, like multiple six figures, like really doing really well. And then the husband was working in IT, which was really cool, like security. And and like, I forget what the term is, but it's almost like digital forensics, which is like wild. It's something I didn't even know. So yeah, I did that for about a year and they paid extremely well. They took such good care of me. I learned so much and then realized 
you know what, I don't want to sit at home all day, right? Because it's almost like being a mom. I'm young, I want to explore. So that's when I started to try to get into an office environment. Okay. Uh, so what'd you do next? I mean, I, I get that. I, I have a niece that nannied and, and loved it. But after a certain amount of time, she realized this was what I want to do a long time. I can be a mom at some point in time, right? Yep. And yeah. So um, what was next? So the, I really wanted to be in an office. I felt like I wanted to wear the skirt, the heels, the makeup, do the hair, like have people my like the same age as me around. And also ultimately I really wanted to just be in a place where I can make more money and there's more possibility for my career because with the nanny job, I was lucky I was able to move to Queens and I shared an apartment with someone who, again, I found on Craigslist and she was awesome. But I, again, I wanted more. I wanted to get closer to the city, get more to the corporate life, like that boss lady type mentality. So I actually, before I transitioned out of my nanny job, I got my real estate license. And so I worked as a communications assistant and a licensed real estate agent in Manhattan for, I think it was city habitat. So I did that for a couple months and that was wildly helpful because not only did I get to know Manhattan, right? I was stomping around the entire borough is trying to basically rent or sell apartments, but I got to really know what it's like to be in an office environment. Like I didn't know what outlook was like the mail, you know, app. I didn't know what that was. I know it sounds silly, but like, I didn't have the basics of like some office etiquette, if you will, that's like at the corporate level, like there are things like calendar management, like how do you, I had no idea. So, or even like etiquette with talking to clients over the phone or all of that. So she taught me a lot, but what ended up happening is I joined in October, which is a slow season for real estate. So I ended up closing my first deal. Yay. Exciting. And then the market completely dropped. And then the woman I was working for, she was doing extremely well. She was a very, she did, she did great as in real estate and she was a broker. She decided that she wanted to kind of like ax her team and basically travel the world, which is so great. But like, here I am, like I quit my job to like do this full time. And I'm thinking you're going to be a mentor to me. And she like picked up and left. And like that, that was devastating because what ended up happening is I had, I had to give up my apartment. I left my apartment because I couldn't afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I had to pack up all my stuff and move back to my parents because I, I think I have a screenshot somewhere on my phone. I had all my student loan debt. I had maybe an additional $4,000 worth of debt trying to stay afloat. Yep. And I had like $27 to my name and was like, it was the most stressful Christmas I've ever had because I was like, what, what am I doing? Like I worked so hard to get this degree. Mm -hmm. I'm not going for teaching. The real estate thing didn't work out. I look like a failure, right? I spent all this money and I'm trying, I'm working so hard and just nothing is working. So I just kind of pulled the, you know, pulled the plug and said, okay, I need to clearly like rethink about everything and go back home and figure it out. So that obviously really sucked, but in a lot of ways, I think helped shape and mold me into the person I am today. Right. Because I, instead of kind of keeling over, I just, you know, kind of did a lot of self-reflection, like did a lot of work on myself to then you know, I took a break for about a month and then I hit the ground running. And so after that, I got my first, I would say my real corporate job um, through this awesome recruiter that I connected with. Like she was amazing. I, no one wanted to take a chance on me and she mm -hmm. did. And it was like the best experience it could have had at my age because I met so many people who were younger than me. And it was, um, I was working on wall street basically as an administrator and <laughs> It was like the Wolf of Wall Street. I kid you not. Like I thought this was only in movies. Like, no, there were people who were sleeping with each other in the stairwells. There were drugs in the office. Like it was not a safe environment, but I learned a ton. I learned about what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, how to connect with people, how to like conflict resolution, like key things like that, how to hire people. We had, they did mass firings. That was traumatic. Like I learned all of that within three months and then realized like, this is not a place that I can build a career. So let me pivot. And so I ended up in ad tech for a while. And that was, that was really cool. I know you were, you were, you know, bouncing around in tech too. It's like, yep. it's such a vast world between, you know, software as a service. Then you just like, it's especially with the internet now, like there are so many things that you can build and do with regards yeah. to software and tech and stuff. So yeah. there's thousands I got, of ways to make money in tech. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was really awesome. So I worked with this company for about a year 
um, they predominantly focused on campaign marketing. So they mm -hmm. did kind of list building. They worked predominantly with the um, AmLaw 200. So all the mm -hmm. top law firms. Yep. So I got to really get to know like how to do contracts, like the lingo that lawyers use, right? Because they're everything's professional and to a T. I learned about sales. Salesforce was a huge thing. Um, I, you know, I literally had to build out their whole office. They were a startup. So, and they were completely bootstrapped. So it's not like they had these investors throwing money who were like, okay, go get the pretty office with all the snacks and like, let's build this thing out. Like, no, they, everything that they made, they had to then budget and figure it out and inject it back into the company, which is really, really impressive. But obviously there are hurdles if I don't have, you know, limitless spending. So um, now I know you fast forward. I meant to do this earlier up because a lot of people follow along. Um, I gave out my website. So what? let's give out your current website and, and social media before we hop to that. So if those are following people in multitasking, follow along. Can you do that for us real quick? <laughs> sure. So my, you can follow my social handle on Instagram, which is she likes to gab. And then my actual business is the adulting manual. So I have okay. Uh, the adulting manual it's at the adulting manual underscore on Instagram. And then the actual website is www.theadultingmanual.com. And then the podcast is www.corporatequitter.com. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. So you spent all this time kind of bouncing around uh, wall street stuff, uh, real estate uh, software. I mean, affiliate, I mean, internet marketing, essentially being agency. Um, when did you decide, okay, this enough is enough? <laughs> it was from working at my last job, which mm -hmm. I actually loved. I worked at a hedge fund okay. and that was bizarre because right, I'm a teacher with zero knowledge about money. Like I don't know anything about the market. I don't know about capital markets. I, I don't know any of this. And I was lucky enough to be found and hired as an assess, like basically an assistant to 20 treasury and tax professionals. And they were probably the best people I've ever worked with. They were so respectful. I learned so much. And I actually got hired internally, which was right, really great, right? Extra money. I got this right. cool title. I was working now. Mm -hmm. um, I went from an assistant, which is like the bottom of the totem pole to now working in the real estate division for their commercial properties. And I was doing marketing. I was doing event planning, like all of that, right? So I got the fancy new role the fancy new title. And what came with that is I actually was able to afford my brownstone apartment on the New York, you know, Upper West Side in New York for that reason. And then COVID hit. And that's when kind of like everything changed in perspective because the things that I thought were bringing me joy, like networking and talking with people constantly and the, the crazy routines and like the go, go, go. Once that was all dismantled, I was like, oh no, like I actually am not enjoying any of this. I don't enjoy my day to day. Like I want to make more of an impact in the world. And so that's when I was trying to figure out, okay, if it's not this, then what, what is next? So, um, did it come to like an effigy or, I mean, did you just quit? I mean, what happened? I mean, I, I know you weren't enjoying it. Okay. But <laughs> what, what was the pivot point? What, when, when did you just say, okay, I'm really enough is enough. I mean, do you remember the moment of clarity that you had? Yeah. So I would say it was kind of broken up into three specific moments. So there was one specific moment where I was a month into this new role. I don't know anything about this, like what I'm doing, right? You're new, you're, you're kind yeah. of figuring it out. Right. And the people I was working with, they threw me under the bus, like majorly, like there was a project that needed to be done and I wasn't made aware that it was my project, right? Cause I'm new. I'm thinking I'm observing versus the person doing it. And they kind of threw me under the bus and said like, no, it's her fault. And so I ended up, right. I took the project on and then did it, even though it was a little later than it had to be. But that was like a big red, red flag of like, oh, this isn't okay. Like I need to rethink this. And then as time went on, there were other little moments where like that animosity or the non teamwork aspect came up. And so I think it was around maybe the halfway point of my year with this role is when I I really wanted to, we were starting to go back into the office. So that was one thing where people were really upset that they had to, had to go back into the office. And I was thrilled with it because here I am, like, I love being with people. I love to like physically do things. Like I love to get dressed up in the morning and I just, it, it seemed like there were always problems. Everyone was either like angry with each other. Like it was just not a great environment. And not only that, but the impact I was making was like, 
not even there. Like, so we, we used to do a lot of volunteer work and that kind of got scrapped to the wayside. And no matter what I did, I couldn't help the little guy. I like felt like I was stepping on eggshells, like no matter with what I did, whether it was actually in the job or from a volunteer perspective. Mm -hmm. And so that for me, I felt like I wasn't able to really like it just, it came to a point where I was like, listen, like, I don't want the rest of my life to look like this. I don't want to be in a corporate job. And I'm kind of just going with the motions just to make the money to like that. That's it. That's not, I'm a teacher, right? I graduated right. to educate people, to help people. Even when I was an assistant, I was still being that nurturer, right? I was making sure they got to their, their, their meeting on time. I got them the coffee. Like that was still that nurturing, supportive, impactful, mm -hmm. you know, thing. And so the last straw was I actually, it's funny, we talked about before, like when you're working in an environment that's not aligned with you, like you actually feel like you're sick or something's wrong. Yeah. I actually ended up hurting my foot really, really badly. Like I've never had foot problems. I'm a runner, but I, out of the blue, I got, I think it's called plantar fasciitis. And so yeah. I had splitting, splitting pain in my, in, a, in my foot and I could not walk. And the messed up thing was I was grateful that I got it because that meant I didn't have to be around my coworkers or go to work. And that's when I was like, okay, girl, like, this is, this is not, this is not going to work out. Like you need to figure something else out. And so within about two weeks, I had the, the two, you know, I quit my job. I left my apartment. And so I packed up all my stuff and moved back home and now I'm figuring it out. Okay. So uh, you've done a lot of things. Uh, at the <laughs> The ripe old age here. So what age were you when you decided, okay, enough is enough? I'm 27. 27. Okay. Yeah, I'll be 28 next month. But I just, and I've spoken to so many people about this and they're saying, you're better off doing it when you're younger because you have nothing to lose. Like, yes. I don't have kids. I don't own a home. There's so much less risk than if I were to do this when I'm older. And I also hear from so many people like, I had a friend who's a lawyer. He's much older. I want to say he's maybe in his forties. And so he's, he's well enough into his career. And he said, you know, the first year I started doing it, I told myself, oh, I really don't like this. Maybe next year I'll change things. Yeah. And so one year turned into 10 to turned into 20. And now he's so invested in his career that he doesn't even know if he can change it. I, and I would rather be struggling for a year and figuring it out and then get to a place that makes me feel good yeah. than be stuck in a career for 40 years. And I hate 40 years of my life. Yeah, no kidding. Fantastic. So that kind of puts you in the millennial curve then, doesn't it? At yeah, I am. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, the world was interesting and now you've been slapped around a little bit, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, I hate to quote this guy because a lot of people think he's a thug, but uh, it's a great quote by Mike Tyson who said, uh, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And so, yeah. <laughs> you know, life kind of punches us in the mouth sometimes. So tell me about the adulting manual. I, this has been the, the thing that drove me to get you booked. <laughs> so the adulting manual is going to be a 20 somethings guide to learn the lessons they weren't taught in school. And the reason why I did it was because for myself, like I journal every day. And so for me, I always like to look back and kind of see where I've come from and the thoughts I used to have in comparison to where I am now. And one thing I kept on finding, even when I'd reminisce or look in those journals is how much I struggled when I first got out of college. Like I felt like I knew nothing. Like I sure I knew the, you know, the, all these algorithms for math. I knew all this stuff from history, but why don't I know how to do my laundry? Why don't I know what investments are? How do I get an investment? What is a 401k? Like, why, why should I be interested in that? Like very staple things to help you set yourself up from, for success from like a financial perspective, but also like a personal perspective. Like I didn't know who I, I didn't know who I was because for the past 25 years, when I graduated, the people who were making decisions for me was everyone else, my parents, my friends, my colleagues, instead of myself. So I've created a life that someone else wanted, but not for myself. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, you know, the, what's, what happens, and I've seen it a lot, uh, just, you know, the last 70 years, the United States has lived in uh, unparalleled um, success and, and posterity. I mean, things have been going very well. We've had, you know, these cultures where each decade it's gotten easier and easier and easier. And so without struggle, so many people don't learn things. I mean, that's yeah. just, and you've learned that. And so the posterity that we've had over the last seven decades 
it's kind of made softer and softer and softer people. And so they're like you say, there's so many people who step out who have been cared for their whole life and they've not had to really struggle or stress through things. And uh, then they get punched in the mouth. Life you <laughs> know, gets, gets punched in the mouth when you realize the job that you have will not support an apartment in New York City okay? yeah. or the lifestyle that you want in different places. So yes, it's an important thing. So um, did you get counsel on writing this, you know, putting this together? Will you just, have you just done this on your own? And then follow on question onto that. Are you going to self-publish? Or are you working with a publisher? So those are actually a lot of questions that I'm asking myself like right now on a daily basis. So I joined a business mastermind about a month ago, and that has been wildly helpful because these people are like way far in advance. Like they've made money from their business. Like I've made a whopping zero dollars. Like that's how far along I am. But right now, what I'm really working on is my podcast, because that's to kind of get people to know me, what I'm about, exposure, traffic, things like that. And then the manual, I actually haven't, I may be like 10% into actually writing it, but Mm -hmm. I'm now just really, I'm connecting with my ideal, you know, prospect, my audience, finding out what is it that you need? What is it that you want? Because I don't want to create something that I think will work really well, but it's not what they think will work really well for them. So I'm just right now just taking on, you know, a lot of research, trying to find out what they want. It will be in the form of probably an ebook or a workbook. So it'll be a two part thing. So you just print it, put it in a binder, and then there's kind of like a read, learn section, and then like a work section. In the future, I would love for it to be a physical book, more in terms of like an actual story instead of a workbook. But, you know, we'll see kind of where that goes, but I will make it into a course and then maybe one day a community. Okay, fantastic. Well, you know, online courses are huge. You know, we talked yep. a little bit about that before we got on air. And uh, people, be- because of the ability to self-pace those things, people love them. You know, you, yep. you want to learn something quick, you can get in there and, you know, it's kind of like binge watching, you know, you can binge a, a course or you can, you know, do it once in a while here and there. So it's, it's a great medium for education. So that's fantastic. Well, I think you've done some interesting things and I do think, and I'm not trying to judge anybody, but there are a lot of millennials that kind of do need to be punched in the mouth (laughs) um, to wake up to the fact that some of the things that we were fed aren't true. Okay. You know, everybody's entitled to a job or free this or free that and stuff. And, you know, it's not easy. It just isn't, you know, and so um, it, it wakes a lot of people up and, You know, it's one of those things as a parent of uh, kids, I've got five kids, 18 to 26. Sometimes you just have to let them fail. And that's kind of how I look at the current generation of millennials who are out there and they're poking around and now they're starting to realize, well, hey, not every, not everything's equal and not everything's easy. And oh my goodness, I have things I need to do that may not be easy to do, but I'm bullish because it's a, it's a generation of great people really important uh, sharp minds and people who have started this transition. And I talk about, I get on a soapbox about this, a transition to unconventional. I mean, there are so many different ways to make money. There are so many different types of trades and there's so many different things that you can do today is we don't have to go back to the conventional way of doing things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of why I started my podcast too, is because like corporate quitter, it's about finding untraditional means of making a living or, you know, anything to that effect. So, you know, whether it's investments, whether it's creating an online course, affiliate marketing, like there, there's so much that you can do. We are in such a fruitful time in life that there's just, why not? And if, if you don't, you know, you could maybe go into that and then you realize you don't want it and you want the job that's at a desk and that's totally fine too. Cause yeah. there are, so many benefits about going to a job. It's stable. You have benefits. You work with people. Like I love being around people, yeah. but sometimes doing online business is a little bit lonely too anyway. Oh, I know that. I know that. There are, there are weeks I've gone. It's like, maybe I should go to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and cause you know, when you get stuff delivered and those types of things, it's like, I haven't been outside in a while. What, what am I doing? So yeah. Well, you're doing a fantastic job. So throw out your website again for us. Sure. It's uh, theadultingmanual.com. And I also have corporatequitter.com. That's my podcast. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to, to follow your podcast along the way. Okay. So I've got my last question that I ask all guests. Okay. 
Um, we have this concept in the Western world, it's, it's, it's not just the United States, of a bucket list, okay? Things we want to accomplish or do before we, you know, our time on earth is done. Well, uh, and actually, I do have a great experience. I interviewed the bucket list guy. He's from Australia. His name is really? Trav B um, Bell. And it's episode number 60, if anybody hasn't listened to it. He's a hoot. One of the most interesting guys I've ever uh, interviewed and a lot of fun. Well, anyway, we have this bucket list, things we want to do. Okay. But in the universe, there's always an opposite, right? There's opposite to everything. Uh, if you're a physics person like I was, yeah, there's an opposite to everything. So there's another list out there that things you don't want to do. Now, it rhymes with bucket and starts with an F, but this is a family show, so I <laughs> won't say that. Okay, so, That's so funny. Now, there is on this F it list, there are things that you just have no interest in doing and never want to do. Okay. I'll throw out a couple just to maybe, you know, get your juices flowing because most people have never been asked about an F it list. They're like, well, I know a bucket list. Okay. And of course, the next time someone talks about a bucket list, you're going to remember our conversation. <laughs> so a couple of things that are on my effort list. I'm not doing sardines again. Nope, sorry. Don't have any interest <laughs> in sardines. Another one is I will never, ever, ever again do a Lakota Sioux sweat lodge. The concept of excessive heat, excessive humidity, excessive drumming, and excessive chanting in a language I don't understand all combined in a very confined space and you know, claustrophobia, no, not doing that, okay? So what might be an item or two that would be currently on your effort list? I have never been asked that before and I'm a little stumped, honestly. Okay. Um, I, Just think of something not that's completely to... yucky to you, you know, and yucky is a, an appropriate term. What's completely yucky to you? Just something- you I would never like go in a river or swamp like i know it sounds so lame but i'm actually like terrified of sharks like in in like the ocean so i would never like get i, I think i'm also scarred from like the subway water and then, like it's like stagnant and gross i would never want to go swimming in the river like my friend from romania does it all the time and i'm like nope no nope, no lakes no ponds i'm not doing it okay okay i've been i've been in a canoe and a shark swam under it that was twice the size of the canoe. Oh my God, I freak out. I can't do it. I, I... Uh, I've been in the Amazon. I was rained upon by, by spiders. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. So anything else besides not going in the water? I, so we actually, during COVID, we got chickens and ducks. Uh -huh. They're really awesome, but would not do that again. Like we get great eggs, but there is so much poop. Let me tell oh. you, it is like a full-time job yeah. cleaning up the yard from all the, the yucky, gross mud poop things that the ducks make. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, fantastic. You've been a great guest today. So thank you for coming on and being transparent and willing to share openly your story. I mean, it's uh, like I say, success doesn't fall out of the sky and hit people. And so it's a journey. And so thank you for sh um, sharing that. And then once you get the adulting manual out, we're going to have you back on the show and talk about that. And it's reception and those types of things. So uh, Gabby, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, folks, we'll call that a wrap for today's episode. Again, do not forget to go by the show website, rexandrewshow.com. That's where we have all of our entering interesting stuff. Great um, uh, supporters of the show, the uh, sponsors, My Next Evolution and Wealth Management Group. So stop by and take a look at their stuff. And until next time, we just have three things to say, which I say every time. Be safe, and but be bold, and make it a great day.